So sometimes you randomly get into the mood of switching things up and improving your setup. And that's exactly what happened to me. I decided, you know what, I need to switch things up a little bit and maybe improve my little gaming hangout corner that I have set up here. If you haven't seen my previous video, which goes over my TV setup, my gaming setup, and kind of this whole relaxation spot that I've made for myself, uh, I'll link it somewhere, you can definitely check it out. But So I decided to make a little bit of changes to the entire premise of this setup here. Essentially, in this area here, I have a spot where I keep a lot of my older games, which remind me of my childhood. Some of my favorite classics are here. These are complete in-box versions of some of my favorite games, the Mortal Kombat franchise, Street Fighter. Here are some original boxed copies of the original Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 3, things like the original Metroid. So these are things that I've collected sort of over the years. Some of my most favorite memories are linked with these games. So I have them here set up near my TV. I have these two shelves here from Ikea. And essentially what I decided is that, you know what, I don't have a quick and easy way to actually just be able to play these games, although I have a very nice TV. So what I decided to do this time is the whole premise of this setup is that I want to be able to you know, pop in, I work a very busy career, I don't have a lot of free time, but I want to just be able to, you know, if I want to play some, let's say, Paper Mario, I just want to be able to play it on GameCube. If I want to switch over to the Nintendo Switch, I want to be able to just be able to do that. If I want to then play some PlayStation, maybe some original Xbox games, I want to be able to do that. So essentially to make that happen, I had to do a little bit of changes and a little bit of nice additions to this setup which i want to go through now so now this is not like a clean fancy version of a gaming setup i kind of had a clean and fancy version this is me as like a work in progress of some of the new ideas that i have about the gaming setup so first let's start with the tv this is a 65 inch samsung q70 and this is a fantastic television it upscales images even from older consoles to make them look really crisp and nice over that uh, besides that, it's 4K, 120 hertz, so it's completely ready for the next generation of consoles, which I have right there. There's the PlayStation 5. Um, it's completely ready for that. But besides that, it has very good native upscaling built into it. So if you hook up an older console to it, it looks really fantastic. So number one, you know, you have to have a decent TV. Luck, I'm lucky to have a very nice TV that's able to do 120 hertz, so I'm able to do all the next gen stuff, and it also makes some of the last gen stuff look really nice. So underneath that, I have like this simple IKEA stand. This is another little stand that I've had for a while. This is also from IKEA. The whole premise of that is that I'm thinking about actually having my PlayStation 5 maybe vertical instead of horizontal. I got kind of used to having it horizontal, but I feel like it'll look nice vertical. So now let's look at this stand and what, I, what do I have in this stand? A couple of PlayStation 1 games. You'll see why shortly. Those are those Zelda Joy-Cons that I had gotten before. Underneath that is actually some uh, strategy guides. I don't really have any. I only have two. One for Ocarina of Time, one for Super Mario that I've had for many, many years. So there's the PlayStation. And next to that, I have a couple of controllers here. Xbox Series controller, which I play on my Xbox One X. PlayStation 5 controller. Switch Pro Controller, an older PlayStation controller. And underneath here, one of the new additions that I have is this is the Nintendo GameCube. It's hooked up via HDMI, so I'm able to play any GameCube game that I have here in my collection. Just pop in and be able to play it. Not only that, but the other thing that's really cool about this is if you look down here, I have the Game Boy Player as part of it. So that means you, you take this disc, it's like a disc that comes with the Game Boy Player. You pop that in there. Now I'm able to play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, everything I can just play right through my GameCube. So currently I'm thinking about playing some Metroid Fusion. I never played that game, but before the new Metroid comes out, I'm thinking about doing that. So I've kind of been taking a look here. Some of the older classic games that I have for the game, game Boy, I'm deciding to be able to do that because then, you know, I could just pop in, enjoy a game if I really want to, a quick play of anything. So. I really do enjoy the GameCube. I thought it was a good console, and I do have a lot of great games, including this one, Metal Gear. This never came out on any other console, so it's good to just be able to pop in and play this game. I also never played Metroid Prime, so I'm thinking about you know actually giving Metroid Prime a shot. I know there's talks about some remakes, but 
I might just try it on the actual GameCube. So right next to that, I have this. So this is the original backwards compatible PlayStation 3. It works with PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2 games, as well as of course, PlayStation 3 games. So basically with the combination of that and this, I'm able to play any generation of PlayStation games. So it's really convenient and nice that this hooks up via HDMI. The only thing about it is that it's pretty loud. Back then the console generations were built differently. So it's really loud, a little bit laggy, uh, just in terms of startup and loading, but that's because now we've gotten spoiled with the SSD drives and the new systems. But I really wish this system was able to do backwards compatibility, but it is what it is. So basically with this, PlayStation 1, that's why I have a couple of those PS1 games right there. PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, I'm able to play all generations of PlayStation. So that's a really fantastic thing to have. Um, these can be somewhat tricky to find, but you can find them on eBay. People sell them. Um, a lot of them get messed up, so... It's kind of tough, this is like a 12 year old console, but I still have it here hooked up and ready to go because with this, it just adds a lot of versatility. Underneath that, I have my Xbox One X. I did make a video recently about, I had the Series S, but I ended up returning the Series S. My conclusion really with that is that I'm probably gonna upgrade to the Xbox Series X eventually, but for now, I'm content with the Xbox One X. And then the cool thing about this Xbox is this is an all-inclusive system. Original Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One X games, everything plays. Yeah, it doesn't have the new series benefits and whatnot, but Halo will play on it. It'll be 30 FPS. If it really sucks and it really bothers me that much, I'll try to upgrade. But for now, I'm gonna play Halo that way. So this is basically, I can play any generation of Xbox just from this one console. The combination of these two consoles lets me play any generation of PlayStation. And then this console lets me play all Game Boy games as well as GameCube games. So. The other thing about this television is that there's only four HDMI ports. I have the Apple TV, obviously you see hooked up here. So what do I have is I have this 4K switcher. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a 4K switcher. And what the, basically what that allows me to do is have multiple outputs to it. So I don't have a Nintendo Switch here. I sold my Nintendo Switch. I'm gonna pick up the Nintendo Switch OLED. I have that pre-ordered. So when that comes in, I'll hook that up via, via that. Um, switcher there and that allows one of the HDMI ports from the television to become four additional ports. So that's going to be cool because I'll be able to play then Nintendo Switch, GameCube and all the other games that I mentioned before. Now I was thinking about hooking up a Nintendo Wii U because then with that you can play original Wii games, some notable ones like Super Mario Galaxy and then you can play the Wii U games which the only things I really want to play on the Wii U still is probably just the remakes of the Zelda games, which I never really got to play. I never finished Wind Waker, so maybe that. But I haven't decided to do that just yet. I could potentially also hook up a Wii U. I will have one more slot in that switcher. So besides that, over here, like I mentioned to you before, I pulled out some of my older games. I'm just gonna put them in sleeves to kind of protect the cardboard of these games. This, these are just posters from pre-orders so I just got like really cheap frame just to put them in the cheap frame. Am I going to hang it? I really don't know. Now this TV has great sound, but what I've been doing is I've actually been having the output of the sound from this Apple um, HomePod. It's fantastic, honestly, like the details and the level of sound. It really is like 3D spatial audio. It's really nice. If I had a second HomePod, I probably would set it up the size of the TV. But for now, I have one HomePod and really it does the trick. Most of the times, if I don't mention it to people who come over, they can't even tell that the sound is not coming from the television. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm still debating what to do about maybe hooking up a Wii U or not. But then with, with that switcher, at any moment, whatever I want to play, here's some controllers for the PlayStation. There's the GameCube controller. I have a WaveBird controller, but this is the one that has a very long wire to it. It was for Smash Brothers. And this is fantastic. I can very easily plug it in right there. And there's more than enough space to reach over to the couch. I didn't really change up the couch. You know, the couch is pretty much brand new and nice. And here's the, the little center table, coffee table. But yeah, that's pretty much the setup that I have right now. And basically the goal was that you come back from work, you want to just jump in on a quick game, play a little bit of Metroid, play, play a little bit of Metal Gear. Just jump in, hit the switcher, 
and then I pretty much have access to almost every generation that I would want to play currently at this time. So still a work in progress, still working on some things. Have a couple of boxes over there. I was thinking about the classic consoles too, SNES, NES, but to be honest, Nintendo Online is pretty good. It covers the majority of those games. So as long as you have a Nintendo Switch, with Nintendo Switch Online, we're, we live in a pretty crazy time that you can basically have all this stuff and play multiple generations spanning like two decades very easily on a 4K TV, 65 inch. And the picture quality looks actually really good. So anyway, that's that. Made a quick video just about the fact of some of the changes that I'm bringing into this setup and just what kind of setup I have to optimize the chances of playing video games. Now, the last thing left is I just have to make time so that I can actually sit here and enjoy it. I set it up, but then I usually don't get a chance to really sit and enjoy it because I'm usually busy doing stuff like that. But anyway, that's a different topic for a different video. Anyway, that's the setup. I'll continue working on it, cleaning it up, cable management, making it look nice and fancy and clean, and then we'll go from there. But until next time, let me know your thoughts down below and let me know what you think about the setup.